So now let's move forward to the international significance of ICT policy and the role that ICT can play in economic, social, and educational change. Rationale for strategic policy for educational ICT. National ICT policies can serve several important functions. Strategic policies can provide a rationale, a set of goals, and a vision for how education systems might be with the introduction of ICT and how students, teachers, parents, and the general population might benefit from its use in the school. We will then be discussing the four strategic policies. First, we have the support economic growth. Second, promote social development. Third, advance educational reform. And the fourth and the last one is to support education management. Let's elaborate the support economic growth. Let's say, for example, in Singapore, where education policy has always been strongly linked to the development of human capital. Just like this quotation, learning to think, thinking to learn, towards a thinking schools and learning nation. That is a support economic growth. We are supporting the growth of each economic. We have the second one, promote social development. Commission policy of information for the society of all. Let's say for example, in Finland, the Finnish Information Society program envisions a society in which a knowledge and expertise are from part of the culture and also this is the key factor in production that is promoting social development. We have the third one, advanced education reform. This is the introduction of ICT that includes curricula reforms or the curriculum reforms. Other curriculum reforms emphasize what are sometimes called the 21st century skills. Let's say for example, Australian schools and teachers are integrating ICT to support experiential constructivist learning in schools and across learning sites. We have the last one, the support education management. Some countries advocate the use of ICT to improve the management efficiencies of accountability of schools or the education system more generally. Let's say for example, uh, the current education ICT policy of the United States emphasizes the use of technology to efficiently deliver online content and assessments. So, that is one of the example of support education management. These four policy rationales are not mutually exclusive. Indeed, a number of countries have used two or more of these rationales together in mutually reinforcing ways. Okay, so now let's move forward to the operational components of ICT policies. We have first the infrastructure development. This is typically a policy emphasis in the early stages of a country's use of ICT in education. We also have the second one, the teacher training. Teacher training is a key element education reform, particularly training that focuses on classroom practices that engages teachers in a community. We also have the pedagogical and curricular change. This is an especially important component of operational policies, particularly for strategic policies that promote education reform and is the articulation of changes that ICT related in curriculum, pedagogical practices, and assessment. We also have the content development. Because of the uniqueness of their curricula or special considerations of culture and language, this find a need to emphasize the development of digital content as part of their operational policy. Policy Recommendations The strategic and operational policy elements provided can serve as a framework for the analysis and comparison of national policies 
but there are particular substantive recommendations that can help policymakers use this framework to craft particularly effective educational ICT policies. Policy alignment is of three sorts. The strategic operational alignment, horizontal alignment, and vertical alignment. Alignment between strategic and operational policies assures that ICT programs and projects are directly tied to the nation's goals and rationale. Okay, we have the horizontal alignment. This assures that ICT policies are consonant with other policies within the educational system. Vertical alignment. This refers to the coordination of policies up and down structural layers. We have here the distributed policies. Other countries have a federal political structure or a decentralized education system where educational decision making is vested in the states, provinces, or local distincts or villages. Another one is the policy implementation. Where these policies are articulated but teachers are often not aware of the specifics of these policies or their goals. In turn, policies are implemented as programs. The fourth one is the private-public partnerships. These partnerships can involve the Ministry of Education along with universities train a majority of the country's 400,000 teachers, principals, and professors in coordination with its ICT master plan. Another one is the outcome-oriented policies, programs, and evaluations. The use of ICT in education constitutes a significant investment and this requires a significant return in terms of learners served and the number that become productive workers and citizens. Sixth and the last one is the resources. Policy makers can benefit not only from these recommendations, but large collection of resources that can aid them in policy formulation and implementation.